ven aquí. Quédate en la radio. No, no te largues. De acuerdo. He visto al grandullón. Tenía la tapa. ¿Qué tras él? ser el ruido que oímos. No, ¿qué ha sido eso? ¿Acaso importa? Necesitamos la tapa. ¡Aquí! Ha tenido que pasar por aquí. Voy a poder saltar, Alex. Tendré que buscar otra forma. ¡Mierda! Fíjate. A veces te toca la lotería.
¡Aléjate! ¡Aléjate de mí! Muy bien. Probemos. A mi hermano. Yo quería ser como él. Me habría gustado decirle que lo siento. Ahora ya no podría hacerlo. Está muerto. Está muerto. Joder, Alex. Lo siento mucho. Ya está. Fin de la partida. Se acabó. Al menos por ahora. Siempre se puede volver a intentar a ver si hay más suerte la próxima vez. No ha estado mal. Unos vivos, otros muertos. ¿De quién será la culpa? Hasta la próxima. Quizás en Little Hope o en otro lugar. Pero seguro 
que nos volveremos a ver es inevitable. Won't you spare me over till another year? 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 Oh, death. Oh, death. Won't you spare me over till another year? Well, what is this that I can't see with ice cold hands taking hold of me? Well, I am deaf, none can excel. I open the door to heaven or hell. Everybody's looking, trying to find a way out. See them seeing every day what this world's all about. You're realizing that it's hard, you're trying to pick the right path. There's poor people, poor streets inside the neighborhood mass. Bearing scars of the past, they keep trying to escape. Destiny within their eyes, these are the tears of our fate. All these numbers of our lives that we keep trying to equate. They got us living every day, we're in search of that gate. Pray. Oh, death. Oh, death. Won't you spare me over to the night? Someone would pray once you come and call me another day. The children prayed, the preacher preached. Time and mercy is out of your reach. Lo and behold, the pale horse and the rider who decides the fate of one who made a failed choice. With a tail off behind it, the trail's off in the fire that sparked those who don't know they're stuck on a stale course. Yeah, we all face death when it comes to take your breath. Usually without knowing how many days are left Some raise their chest, others cower when it comes Whether you're living in the towers or down in the slums Oh, death, oh, oh, death Won't you spare me over till another year Well, I'll fix your feet till you can't walk I'll lock your jaw till you can't talk I'll close your eyes so you can't see this very hour Come and go with me Heaven's coming, praying it doesn't come late. This is for real, man. It's how I push through my pain. When ass is always falling and death's rain. It's cold outside. Death look me in my eyes. Hold through these plans, man. We gotta be wise. Hold through together. It's then they will rise. I'm saying peace for all my people that can see through the lies. When can that la la brisa running up her thighs while she's singing? Oh, oh, Take a moment to reflect on Think of all the things in your life that you slept on Or slip through your fingers like Teflon Cause you lost your focus steady Think about the next dawn Saying that the next dawn you'd make things better But you didn't get a chance to make your reparations Better make some preparations But if you're not ready yet Death comes for all of us my friends So you better get
Olson. Hé. Hey. Qu'est-ce qui s'est passé Horror anthology is much loved and has an established pedigree across all forms of entertainment. From twice told tales by Nathaniel Hawthorne in 1837 to Clive Barker's Books of Blood in the mid 80s and with the likes of Blackwood, Poe and Lovecraft in between, short story horror writing has long been a popular format. Largely regarded as the first published horror anthology, Twice Told Tales is a collection of mostly previously published stories from The Token, an annual illustrated gift book published in Boston. The author of Twice Told Tales, Nathaniel Hawthorne, was born on July the 4th, 1804, in Salem, Massachusetts. His great-great-grandfather was John Haythorne, a Puritan, and one of the judges who presided at the Salem Witch Trials of 1692. In 1842, Edgar Allan Poe reviewed Twice Told Tales for Graham's magazine, concluding that Hawthorne was a man of indisputable genius. By this time, Poe, also from the state of Massachusetts, had already written his own collection of short Hey, what's up, man? Conrad. Good to finally meet you, Conrad. This is Brad, by the way, my little bro. Hey, man. Want to crack a cold one with me? From the Man of Medan, I play a character named Conrad. And I think initially when we find Conrad, he is a sort of entitled guy, a wealthy American who's on vacation. But where's the old crust bucket skipper, anyhow? He's an adventurous guy. He lives off the cuff. He does what he wants. I'd invite you to make yourselves at home, but... Uh... And I think that's kind of fun to play as an actor. He has no censor, he's no filter. So whatever circumstance he's put into, you know exactly how Conrad feels. And so it was kind of fun performance to start out being brash, kind of a silly guy, and just jump in and have fun with that. So is everybody on board and ready to go? Uh... 
You're selling, I'm buying. Well, I think Conrad and I have some similarities. I think the sense of humor and the sense of fun are similar between Conrad and I, but I will say that he's a little more aggressive and a little more outlandish than I am. Guys, look, I think we gotta listen to our experienced, beautiful, smart, and beautiful captain here. If she says we should do things Connie, the right- please, I didn't bring you on this trip to get laid. Wait, what? I think Conrad's <laughs> the kind of guy that I would like to be at a party with. You know, I'd like to have a barbecue and drink some beers with him. I don't know that Conrad and I would be best friends. I think we'd butt heads a little bit. Right on, Bradical. I like the cut of your ship. It's jib. Don't ruin it. I think the scenes that I've had the most fun with so far are basically when Conrad is going absolutely crazy. I don't want to give too much away, but there's a scene where these, these sort of fishermen interact with our divers, with our core crew here, and he's just a bit of an asshole. Hey, we got damage here, you see this? We can take care of this, man, it's not a problem. I mean, what do you think, like 10 bucks cover it? Oh, whoops, my bad, let's make it 20. Okay, okay, hold on, I got this. Well, shoot, you, you think it's more like 30? I can do 30. All right. You drive a hard bargain, but I'm with you. Here, you know what? Let's just throw in the whole pot. That's yours. You go ahead. Let's go. No! He just got an attitude. He's brash. These people are messing with his group, and he just kind of lets loose and talks trash to them. And as a guy who would never do that in real life, it's uh, a lot of fun to just kind of let Conrad flow, say whatever he wants. You are an idiot. They left, didn't they? That doesn't make you any less of an idiot. You know, the only thing funnier than seeing you try to buy your way out of that situation is watching you put your money to waste. Got a smile out of you. Worth every penny. I got... One of the most interesting and one of the key moments that sticks out for me is Conrad's decision in the first act of the game either to stay with the group or potentially just take off. Storm's eight miles away. They came here on a boat. Maybe we can take it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a speedboat. I can get out through the window. We gotta break these off first. Too loud. They'll hear it. But we're gonna break them during the thunder. <sighs> Good call. Don't leave us here, okay? And I think, again, this is what's interesting. Depending on how the player sculpts the story, Conrad can become a coward, essentially, and desert his friends and his family, or become a hero and stay. These fuckers need to pay. So that, to me, is very, very interesting. Two very human choices, and depending on how our player decides to live with these characters, can totally change the outcome of the game. So I think that I enjoy when Conrad makes the heroic choice and gets to stick around. He obviously gets to see more of the adventure, but it's just as possible that he tries to save his own life and takes off. Ooh, wow, that was intense. <laughs> That's one way to put it. You got a better way to put it? All the characters do have very strong personalities and drives. Leave, leave, leave! I think Conrad is the instigator. Good news, bad news, bad news. I don't see how this could get any worse. I think he is the one that really starts <laughs> the confrontation with the fishermen. These are kind of, maybe the fishermen I pissed off earlier. Oh, God damn it, Conrad. Great, just great. And the good news. So I think in a lot of ways, Conrad is there to stir the pot and create drama. Uh, I recognize them. How was that good news? I thought you were gonna ask the good news first. You're such an idiot, Jesus. Do I prefer playing the good guy or the bad guy? I think that there's there's fun in both. To be honest, I don't get to play the bad guy as much as I get to play the good guy, so I think I relish those moments where I get to play the darker side of things. But I think every good hero has that balance, has that dark side. I think a good guy who only is doing good things is kind of boring. You just had to piss them off, didn't you? So I think that there's elements of both sides in both characters. And the best villains are the villains that don't think they're doing anything wrong. Their motivation is not like, oh, I'm a mustache twirling bad guy. It's like, no, they're doing what's right for them. It just happens to be against what most people think is the right thing to do. If I can't shoot them as payback, at least I could give them a nice jab with a sharp knife. 
because I'd had some experience working with motion capture and games before, this experience was much easier for me coming right in. I didn't feel like I was jumping into the deep end. What I really like is that all the actors are constantly there all the time. There's the ability to work off each other without the pressure of specific lighting and marks. There's a freedom to that that I really, really enjoy. It's been really good. It's been very kind of a free experience as far as like motion capture performance. You got a funny way of saying, thank you, Conrad. You're a piece of work, Conrad. I'm not all work, I'm a little play, too. Hashtag wink. Hello. I am the curator, the curator of stories, stories of love and hate, greed and beauty, life and death. Story